Thanks so much for uh, joining us. I uh, can't wait to introduce you to uh, the guest I got right now. Very funny man, uh, but actually just having the chance to meet him in person. To, to be honest, humility is the first word that uh, wow. comes to my mind. Uh, so, but right now, without any ado, let me introduce you to uh, Frank Shelton. Frank, Rick, thank, thank you, you so much, much sir. God Absolutely. bless you. Now, you grew up in uh, in D.C., right? I did. Yes, yeah. sir. Born and raised in Washington, D.C. That's that's great. Now, what what is it like for? Because I know we got a lot of people who watch the show. You know, growing up here in in Atlanta, right in the downtown. Right. So, metro to metro area. I mean, as a kid growing up in the capital of the United States. What, what impressions did you get from that? Um, well, the neat thing is uh, former Speaker Tip O'Neill was right, all politics is local politics. Uh -huh. And uh, I think that could be true here of ministry. I mean, good night. You got Charles Stanley, Johnny Hunt, Eddie Long. I mean, you guys got all the heavyweights of ministry of all different denominations here. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes we take for granted, like uh, one minute I'd see the county commissioner of my hometown 12 miles from D.C. and then literally be with uh, the most powerful person on the planet, you know, so yeah. local, national, international. That's what I say even in church circles, all ministries big, whether you go to church running 30 or yeah. 30,000 like Lakewood, we serve a big God. So wherever you're at, yeah. just bloom where God's planted you. But it was, it was an honor. So I, yeah. I dreamt big. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to talk about that, actually, you saying you dreamt big, because I yeah. know even in your bio, you said, you know, that you did have a passion of getting into politics That's and you right. got in that fairly quickly. I was fortunate and uh, it was God's grace, mm -hmm. but it was also my dad. My dad was a fourth generation DC police officer. And he basically said, Frank, I can get you in the door, but it's you and your character and credentials that will get you up and down the floors. <laughs> so I do <laughs> thank God for those yeah. who opened the yeah. door. Mom always taught me dance with the person that took you to the prom. So, <laughs> so it, like that. I'm not all that sharp. I'm, it takes me two hours to watch 60 minutes, to be honest with you. So, right. But it was a blast. I loved it. I walked there every day thinking... Yeah. This is as if it was the first day, knowing it could be my last day. I didn't deserve to be there, but I gave God all that I had. And I said, God, here am I, send me. So for 17 years, we did the political route. And I thought public service is selfless, not selfish. And uh -huh. I believe when you give, you gain. When you serve society, you find satisfaction. Uh -huh. And when you live for the Lord, you cease to exist and begin to live. So I just wanted to just serve people, and by serving, God promoted me. I've learned that serving is the promotion, uh -huh. and sometimes you got to go low before He'll take you high. Amen. But the key is professionally, personally, success begins and ends with salvation, which is Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. But He took me for a ride, and uh, just my dad was a policeman, and he's still larger than life in my eyes. So we did 17 years with politics, and then uh, I did a year with the U.S. Capitol Police. And at one time, my dream was to join the Secret Service. Uh, I don't know why I wanted to wear a suit, a Rolex <laughs> watch, have a little earpiece, and jog, jog next to a... There is something in my... I mean, when you grow up and you watch all the yeah. movies or even the Amen. news and you see that, there is something exciting well, about that and, character. Yeah, and like I had the Clint Eastwood in the line of fire poster <laughs> in my college yeah. dorm. And most people want to retire on the beach. I was just hoping to get hit by a bullet. I mean, that was my... <laughs> life and and so anyways but uh and that's a calling that and that's yeah. why i wrote my book because sometimes we think oh you have to preach in a pulpit or be a missionary in you know madagascar to feel like i'm serving yeah. jesus you could be the greeter at walmart and rock the world whatever yeah. your hand finds yeah. to do yeah. but i knew that being a policeman was as much as a calling as a clergy uh -huh. but with all my public speaking i went from writing speeches for a congressman uh, I was bivocational in ministry, ordained for 17 years, and by my 35th birthday, I had already worked almost 18 years for Congress. Wow. In my last year working in Washington, I preached 100 times with a full-time government job. It was like Paul made tents by day, but I was daydreaming of my next speaking wow. engagement at night. Wow. So oh, well, I loved what? it. And now, what did make you shift gears? I mean, here you are, yeah. you grew up in D.C., right. and, you know, and I know they say, you know, anyone who lives in D.C. is working okay. in D.C., you know, it it's seems like politics. Yeah. And so, so you grew up in D.C., you did get into politics. Mm -hmm. Here you are also, as, uh, you know, working as a policeman, and now 
all of a sudden, though, here we are talking, and you're an author yeah. and comedian. You know, yeah, <laughs> that is not. Yeah. Those two don't go in the same well, category. So, Paul, so what happened there? <laughs> well, Paul was all thanks to all men that yeah. all the more would be saved. And uh, I'm just hoping one of the attributes will stick. So <laughs> I think I'm funnier looking than I'm funny. But, you know, I just, ever since elementary school, I used to pray, God, if I can make someone laugh, help me be that guy. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to walk through the hallways as Jesus would walk. Even when I played basketball, we lost the state championship my sophomore year. As crazy as it sounds, I wanted to dribble a ball like Jesus. Okay. And uh, the fact is we had a platform then, you know, 1,500 kids come to watch you shoot hoops. Yeah. It was an honor. So win or lose, I was on the team. But ministry is a team effort as well. But yeah. I just knew that there was a heaven and hell, Rick. And I just knew, man, God's coming back. Schwarzenegger was not the first to say, I'll be back. Yeah. It was Jesus. <laughs> He's on his way. Oh. And... In high school, I wanted to be invited to the parties, you know, like everyone. Yeah. I, I wanted acceptance, attention, approval. Uh, it was like a triple A card, you know, I wanted not so much for self, but we're human. Yeah. But I was invited to the parties. I went and go. I didn't drink in high school, didn't do drugs. By God's grace, I was a virgin on my honeymoon night at 26. Uh -huh. um, but I didn't go to the parties, but I knew heaven will be the biggest party of all time. Amen. So in high school, I cried myself to sleep because I wanted to be with my friends. I wasn't holier than thou. I wanted to be with them, but I knew two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. So I was willing to be lonely because I knew Jesus was lovely. I sat out, but I stood up. And my senior year, I was the prom king out of 1,200 kids.